Coming up on this edition of Able Den on Air, we will focus on the conflict and history of Israel, plus we will go through the history of Gaza with David Wecker, social worker of Israel. All that and much more when Able Den on Air on this breaking news edition of Able Den on Air starts right now. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Then On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Able Den On Air, the one, and, uh, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. Coming up on this edition of Able Den On Air, we will focus on the situation in Israel, the history of the situation in Israel, uh, conflict, and um, how you can also, at the end of this program, we will give uh, address and phone number where you can um, send your donations uh, to Israel during this time of need. Um, we would like to welcome a uh, social worker, a social worker in Israel who is no stranger to Abel Denaner, who has been on this uh, program before. Uh, his, uh, his name is uh, David Wecker. He's a social worker in Israel. Welcome, uh, David, to Ableton On Air. Uh, what is your position in Israel? What do you do? And uh, so let's start from there. What do you do in Israel? Then actually, I'm a social worker in a foster with a foster kids. Mm -hmm. I work like I, I, I in charge of the alumni. alumni of the foster care. I try to find them where they can go after they finish the foster care system. Mm -hmm. And I try to make the, you know, work with other, other, um, other NGOs to find, to, to try to convince the government to put more resource. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so let's uh, go, what exactly, so people can understand um, what's going on? What exactly um, is uh, going on now in Israel? And let's talk about that in terms of the history of war. Go ahead, David. 
Yeah, you, then you know, before 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 actually, you know, before of the the term of the like the the, the, whole, the term of the Palestinian it didn't was exist because that when Israel founded then actually they know they know what uh, they know was Palestinians, they just was uh uh the Jordanian they control the area where where today Mm -hmm. They want to the state of of uh, and then and, and in Gaza the the Egypt people they they control there, and after after a while you know after the the Egypt the Egypt people they losing the war and after after what happened in Black September in Jordan, mm -hmm. the uh, Palestinian people they, they like rebel against the. Uh, Abdallah, the, the the father of the king right now in in Jordan, and after they rebel against him and they uh, he, need, he need to fight uh, against them, he say I don't want to take care on this place anymore. And then we start to hear that term, and we have a lot of you know we Israel try to negotiate with the people that live in Judea and Samaria. And uh, for a long time, we do the wire cord, and we do a lot of try to do a lot of peace with them in a lot of term. We did the Oslo, we do a lot of, and uh, as we can see in that uh, in that Sunday, that's very sad Sunday and horrible Sunday. Mm -hmm. Because according, according to so, so let's uh, go down the list here. Uh, starting in 1948, um, so let's go, uh, I have a list here exactly of the situation. 1948 Arab-Israel War, November 1947 to July 1949, to be, exa to, to be exact. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and then, uh, so this was, it started six months of civil war between the Jewish and Arab militias. Uh, with with the mandate the independence war. Yeah, it was the, a mandate period in Palestine, ending uh, and turning into a regular war after the establishment of Israel and the intervention of several Arab armies. And then you had the Palestinian uh, Fedayeen insurgency from 1950s to 1960s, in which Palestinian attacks. And, uh, and reprisal operations carried out the Israel Defense Force during the 50s and 60s. Then you had the Suez, Suez Crisis, April 1956, uh, which was a military attack between Egypt and Britain, France, and Israel. Then you had the Six-Day War, uh, June 1967, which was fought between Israel and Arab neighbors. Uh, then you had the War of um, Aturian, which was 1967 to 1970, uh, a limited war between the Israel military forces and the Egyptian Republic. Uh, Yom Kippur War was in 73. Palestinian insurgency was in South Lebanon. Then in uh, 19, 1982, there was another Lebanon war. Uh, then South Lebanon was in, in two, uh, from 85 to 2000. And the list goes on. Um, and the Gaza war, operate, which is, or Operation Cast Lead, was from in 2008 to 2009. But now we're, we're furthering that in, into what's going on now. You know, um, I'm going to ask you an opinionated question. Uh, do you know how long, according to Netanyahu, this is going to go on for a very long time? Do you, is there? A, do you think there's a ceasefire in the works, or or it, it or not yet? I think that right now the situation like we we try for a lot of time to let the people in Gaza to live their life. We even t take the Jewish out in 20, uh, 2006. 
and really try to see if they want another future for themselves. But uh, right now, I think the, um, the public opinion, and I think that every, every human can see the horrible that, you know, that the, the terrorists from the Hamas group doing, and they get the back, back up from the people that live in Gaza, that they elected them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and now we can see that like the raping of women, the killing of infants, that's like horrible that we never see. We don't want to go back to that horrible time in the histories. Because know, the it, it going according, it's going according to the Bible, to the Torah, you know, where, where they talk about Gaza. Talk a little bit about that and how the Torah views Gaza, and then we can... Yeah, yeah, they actually, actually, Gaza, according to the Bible, it was, it's part of Israel, but, and there is a lot of people that live in, in, in Gaza, it was, and there is, like, a lot of talking about uh, rabbis and uh, all these things that really live in Gaza, and in Gaza, they even found a, a synagogue. And nobody can say that Gaza didn't have a uh, Jewish Jewish uh, roots. And it's it's really it's really like uh, we have a very deep roots there. But right now, I, I don't think I think right now we really need to look on this, you know, and and thinking. Right now, you know, we do we do so much things to try to help the people that live in Gaza to live their life. We think maybe we will we'll choose a better future. But right now, we see that they they more focus on killing us than focus on to making their life better. Mm. And we can't we can't as a as a as a nation and as a as a like as a people that's suffer so much through the history we didn't come to our land just to suffer more and to suffer from things that we we see in the in the past we know we know that there is people that didn't love jewish now we have our country and now we don't going to let that happen no matter what mm -hmm. then right now i think that they're going to be a very strong um reaction to that. We will never do to, to the Palestinians, to the people that live in Gaza, the same thing that they do to us. We will never torture women. We will never rape women. We will never kill the infant, mm -hmm. infant babies. We will not do that. But we will need to ensure that this is the last time that something like that happened. Why? Because why? Can... So, um, so just so people can understand more, why is it that people are, um, I'm trying to do, do something journalistically correct. Why is it that people are so angry at Israel? Is there a main reason for that? Yeah, you know, uh, from my perspective, I think that a lot of people are very angry when people, it's, it's really hard, you know, uh, even as a social worker, you know, it's all the time, it's more easy to blame somebody else in your problem. And this is part of the problem. You know, they really, it's really harder. Mm -hmm. It's really harder and it's, it's more easy to say the Jewish is in charge of everything. The Israel is in charge of everything instead of to say, well, hey, let's fix our society. Let's see what's going on. So, so you, you from the outside looking in, as an Israeli citizen and also uh, a very great social worker, um, you, you know, it's amazing how you care for kids. Um, how do you tell parents about what is going on or how to prepare for this? Uh, you know, uh, you deal with the foster care system. Um, you deal with a lot of things involving uh, children and teenagers. What, uh, let's talk a, a, a little bit about um, what are some tips that you can offer parents? Um, because obviously, psychologically, 
it's not living in a war-torn country. Okay, when, when your anxiety is up, uh, you know people are worried about food. People worry about things closing, services closing that they need. Um, how how can you uh, break it down to people who uh, are going through situations right now? You know, uh, floods, fires, uh, war. What, you know, what are some things that you can offer parents as, as advice going through this right now? Yeah, then I, I will just go back to the last question before I go forward to that question. And I will say, you know, we are just like, 50, 50 years after the Yom Kippur War, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, the the Prime Minister was then Golda Meir. She comes from America, she's an American citizen. But she says something that I think is symbolized this. She say, the day that we will find peace is the day that they will love their kids more than they will hate us. You know, this is the only way to find peace. Mm -hmm. And this is a problem right now. This, this is not a situation. And and I going back back to your going forward to your uh, next question, and uh, I will answer you. Listen, the situation is, is very very hard. You know, there is a lot of people that are, they are post traumatic, and I involve in like a group of volunteer that try to help be women that rapes, kids that they're mother or a uh, uh, father uh, killed or murder or burn alive in, in, in next to them or kids that uh, mother that their son murder their infant son and we try to do our best to give them the the best care that we can do and you know there is a lot of post-traumatic there is all the all the young people that celebrate in that in that party just want to make some fun to relax to chill a, a little bit we need to take care of all of these people and we need to to start a therapy with these people and i i, I think that the most motivating thing that i tell kids through and parents to, through that thing is first to let the emotion talk not don't delete your emotion it's okay we scared you know there is a joke about um, a german officer in the first war he told to the jewish next to him you see you see uh, you are so afraid you're jewish you 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 you, you was the nuts you afraid then mm -hmm. he told him you know if you was scared like me you run away and I think I, I give them all the time. I tell them it's okay. It's okay that you're afraid. It's okay that you feel anxiety. You know, a lot of people feel very bad. You know, right now we feel like our security gone. We feel like unsecure right now. And and we, we feel a lot of... But we as a society really, really... And we going for them. And we looking forward. And we... We, we still focus more about how we make the life of us. We, we want the life. We like the life. We don't want death. No of the people that live around us, you know, of us. This is what we like and this is our main focus. Mm -hmm. And we try, we try, and this is what we all the time talk with the kids. We all the time focus on that. There is a lot of people, kids and teenagers that, that face now anxiety and a lot of things but at the end the, the, the Jewish the Jewish people go through a lot of difficult times and every time they get out from this and they became even stronger and I hope this time it will happen again you know but how do you how do you deal but how do you deal with anxiety and what's going on is there is there any tips that you can give yeah yeah we we, we tell them to talk with the kids about what's going on uh, to tell them to, to tell them it's okay to be afraid to tell them it's okay to to it's very important if you feel something you can go to your parents talk with them about that we tell the parents to, to to give them 
a lot of details about what's going on because we don't want that they will feel like like they they don't know what the situation is and then they start to imagine things like are they going to get into to my house or then we, we give them all these tips and we try to to make the we try to make it better we try to make the situation better and we told them all the time be focused on the future to so pass we we go we going through it together i think this is really important we're going through it together as a society as a country it's unbelievable now how what you see right now everybody is volunteer to make us uh, finish and win that war and and to get out from that situation so i think so um so let's uh pop up a map um this is going to be in editing by the way um so okay so israel uh, as we're looking at a map here um so you have ashkelon erez city uh, uh and gaza yeah sirat uh, from pronouncing um according to the map um so there's uh there's something here called a no access zone, access prohibited by Israel. And the Gaza, Gaza Strip, uh, there's, there's um, restrictions since the permanent blockade in, 20, in 2007. So um, uh, and they had, they had an international airport, airport which was destroyed in 2002, from what I can see in the map. Uh, so explain a little bit, uh, why, why do they call it the Gaza Strip, number one? Is there, is there a reason for that? And um, uh, can you explain a little bit about what, you know, the areas that are, are, are really affected? Yeah, then actually Gaza Strip, if it was in any other, uh, Gaza Strip is Gaza Strip because it looks like a strip. Mm -hmm. This is why it's called Gaza Strip. Okay. Actually, I was in Gaza when there was a Jewish settlement there, and before to, uh, 2006. And actually Gaza can be a wonderful place to live. I think if it was in Israel, there was tons of people that want to live there because it's so beautiful the the ocean is so nice the, the weather is very comfort everything give you like every reason that life will be good but the only problem is that because they make all the terror attack we have to save ourselves and we need to close it but still we give them we give some people from them to come to work in Israel. This can happen to the other side. People from Israel never go and, and work in Gaza. Yeah, but it, yeah, because it says no no access zone. Access yeah, because, pro pro prohibited by Israel. So explain that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because if, if some Israel go to Gaza, it's happened. You know, some, some uh, guy with a mental, some guy that... Uh, that uh, with a mental problem go into Gaza and they kidnap him. Israel can go right now to Gaza. It's, it's, it can have a severe conflict process and it's... it's you mean, you mean severe, severe consequences? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. And, and, um, and it's really, you know, about... We really need to be to remember that. And, you know, we try our best to help them, and all the world actually try to help them, the European Union. But as we can see, we, they choose again and again in terror against in life. And this is, this is the problem. Mm. Um, really sick, you know? Yeah. Um, now, hey, here's the thing. Uh, so you're you're basically now working from home because of the situation. Yeah. Uh, schools are closed. 
businesses are closed. Explain that. Um, you know, people need food in the supermarket. Uh, are they are they hoarding? So ho hoarding means like during the pandemic, people would get extra toilet paper. So during this war, are people stocking up or sh are shelves empty? Yeah, yeah. They, 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 there are things right now that they, we don't have in supermarkets. Like what? We have a shortage of things, like uh, water, for example. Mm -hmm. And we don't have uh, toilet paper. It's a little bit hard to find. We don't have eggs. Mm. They try. They try to make it better, but you know, it it will be a challenging time because a lot of people are very stressful and they take more than they want. You mean you mean more than they're supposed to have? They need more than they need. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, but the supermarket still open, but you know there is part of the unit. You know they they have a shortage of people because more than almost almost uh, four. Hundred thousand people now reserve. So, yeah, what? Totally. Explain to people what exactly is the reserve. Reserve every every citizen in Israel, man or woman, and get, get go to the army when they get to eighteen. And everybody have actually uh, uh, military training for three years, and then uh, three years for men. And, Two, two years for women, and then everybody do every year, he do like a reserve, like to train himself. And then if we we meet some situation like that, we have a very big army to fight against who try to to, to fight with us. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of people go to reserve, then we don't have enough people in the supermarket. And what I do, there is a lot of old people that come and volunteer, just that, that and they don't say, we don't want money, they don't need the money. And they come and they say, okay, we want to help the society of Israel. They come, they work without money, but they they make everything, they make it work, still work, even that the situation is that way. And this is really warm our heart, you know, and we see the Jewish around all, all the world, and even all the Western world right now, they support Israel. And it's really warm our hearts. You know, it's not what the same in, in the past. You know, and, uh, we, we know what happened in the Second World to the Jewish people. So let's you know, talk about, let's talk about services during this time. Um, obviously in Gaza, you know, people are hurt. They need to go to the hospital. Uh, there's a service called... Uh, 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 Mark and David Adam, which is an organization uh, formed by by uh, by nurse Doctor <clears throat> Doctor uh, uh, Shalom, uh, I can't pronounce her name. Uh, in 1930, as a volunteer association in a single branch in Tel Aviv, uh, which has operating branches in Jerusalem. Uh, Morgan David is uh, alum is. Um, is is the equivalent to the Red Cross that is, you know, that it's in Israel. Um, so explain. So if you're a nurse, if you're a doctor, if you're a paramedic, you have to be in this war, correct? You have to help. Uh, is that we, part? No, is that part of the reserves, or is that separate? Yeah, this is something that we do. We help everybody. We help everybody, we don't look in, we see every human as a human. Even the terrorist attack that attacked Israel gets right now treatment. After that, they will need to see a judge and he will decide what's going on with them. But right now, we try to help them because they hurt him. They, they, and we try to help them to, to live, to, to live, and then they can go to the judge and find, find what, what would be the result of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But but we in Israel, everybody is part of. We have a very good health care. Some of the, people, some of the, you know, I know Bloomberg even say that Israel have the best health system in the world, and our doctor is one of the best in the world. And um, 
and we try to you know we try to 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 help the older people that suffer mm -hmm. through that uh, war so uh what so what uh so um is it mandatory so let's talk about the reserves right now um yeah, uh, from what I found out, you we have family that's in the reserves. Um, is it mandatory to go into the reserves uh, during these things? During yeah, this yeah. Time? Actually, yeah, it's mandatory. If you don't go, you they, you can find some result from that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not so easy. It's actually you need to, you need to you have to go. You have to protect. You know, because at the end, if you will not protect, who will protect? You know. Mm. We have just well, I mean, if somebody's sick and they can't go, then that's a different yeah, thing. Yeah, of course, of course. They understand. We don't have authoritarian country. We, we, we are democratic. We, we expect that people have, you know. Okay. So um, explain. Uh, uh, so, so let's um, really, this is the 50th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War, and this is one of the main reasons why this is happening. So can you explain a little bit about that and, and really why this is going on and, and so people can understand it more? Yeah. I, I feel that right now we are we very focused about winning that war and see that things that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But yet we will have to ask the tough questions about how this happened, where the military was, how they don't prefer to that? How they didn't see this the, this coming? You know, we will have to ask these questions. You know, we will have to ask. We will have to see how it's happened, where the intelligence was. You know, we are very proud. These are the people very proud on their, on their, uh, on their army and on their intelligence service. And uh, and we really get. All this be became a little bit harder to believe right now for what happened. But I, I'm sure that after the war, we will do, we will find, we will, we will, we will understand how this happened. And we will prevent it from happening again. I think there is a lot, a lot of reason why it's happening. Can why. can we? I mean, all throughout history. Let's talk about this for a minute. Um, yes, you had the conflict with Israel, but. All throughout history, you had war. The Holocaust was very horrible. Um, and all throughout time, we've had prejudice. Can can we really prevent prejudice from happening? Can we really prevent war from happening? You know, I I, I personally think that we can. We can do our best. You understand? I, I don't know if, if we can we can do our best and we can take a price that it will not be worth it next time to do it. And we can make feel that it will even if they want to, it will take a long time to do it again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this this is the way Israel is going right now. And uh, ho hopefully, you know, I, all the time when when I think what what future you know just my son asked me if the terrorists have a tank you know this is not the world that we want our kids to grow to and we do our best that our kids will live in a better world mm -hmm. this is what I focus about right now um so how can we simplify since we deal with special needs and families how can we simplify this to a person with special need who is in Israel right now, uh, you know, going through this? Um, how do you simplify this in a nutshell, as they say? Uh, how do you explain this to, uh, uh, since you're a social worker? I mean, we explain this to kids uh, that we don't want war. How do you really... Um, explain this to a person with a special need um, because now th the IDF uh, has a special division you know let's talk about that also they have a special division for people with special needs to serve in the army um, non-combative you know not, 
uh, but people with special needs can serve in the Army. So let's talk about that as well. So it's like an open, open-ended question. How do you, yeah. how do you, uh, how do you tell kids with special needs or tell people with special needs about this war? And you know, let's talk about how the IDF um, employs people with disabilities during this. Go ahead. Yeah, actually, I think you know, Israel is a country that came, that founded by people that come from the ashes of the Holocaust. And, uh, and this is why we so sensitive to all this, this uh, spatial need issue, because you know, the German, what I, I know that you know what the German attitude was toward this topic. Mm-hmm. And we really take the opposite direction. We try to uh, that people with special needs will be as much as possible a, a part of the society. We have a very big welfare society just to have that to happen. We spend like maybe double the price to people that in the special education here in Israel for kids. And really focus on that. And I, I think that kids with special needs need like a, a special direction. Every, you know, we, we take them to experts in that field and uh, they help them to understand it. I, I, I don't think I'm the right, that, you know, uh, there is people that know better than me how to, but we take them, there is experts that explain them exactly Help the parents to ex- explain them ex- exactly what's going on. Mm-hmm. But it's you're right about that. That it's really hard. You know, people with special needs they have their challenges, and now they have a get general challenges, and it's it's make it even harder. So how does how does the IDF uh, employ people with dis- um, disabilities? Yeah, then they actually need to volunteer. We don't for they, they, it's not mandatory for them. Because we don't want to want a mandatory somebody and somebody somebody maybe feel that he can do it. Mm-hmm. They vo- they volunteer and they get you know according to their abilities they can go into a lot of units you know mm-hmm. they can choose. Okay, um, uh, what uh, so um, breaking it down. Um, War will never stop. Prejudice will never stop. Or or at least we, you know, we want it to stop, but that's the way things are right now. Um, So do we have a, 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 um, so a, a ceasefire hasn't been issued yet, right? Yeah, um, no, no, I, I, I don't think, I think it will take time this time. I think it will take like maybe months. Mm-hmm. Take a long time because we need to do it very deep tree to that place, things like that. It didn't happen again. We have to touch the roots this time. We can't just, you know, take the grass out. We, we need actually to take the roots out. Mm. Is there anything that we haven't, covered in this that we that you want to cover no i really you know i'm really happy about the opportunity that you let me to speak here you know it's really it's really like warm around my heart that it's the second time that i'm in your show no, I, actually it's the third the third yeah third yeah, or yeah. fourth yeah. Right. yeah 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 yeah. And it's the first time that I, I'm in your show and you know it's it's so so amazing that you So like it. Israel Israel is a socialistic society. Um we give uh, for I will so- not I will not call it it's combined. There is part of their they are socialist society society and there is part of they more capital society. How how so? Uh, how can you break it down? What's the difference between a socialistic and a capital and a capitalistic? Like there is there is places 
like that there there is more like all where all the government controlled and more socialist but most of the market were by work by by a free market free market rules then we, we combine you know even the healthcare in Israel it's like there is there is like organization that fight against each other again to get a client but everybody in Israel deserves to have a, 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 a health insurance do you get um for example if you got hurt during an attack on your house or you you know and you're actually hurt do you um like during a terrorist uh, situation do you get extra money in Israel or extra health insurance how does that work yeah uh, of course actually my father get hurt by a terrorist attack in the I think it was in the in the 90s and he, until now they pay him every month money to to compromise him about that you know what's that mm. we we believe like we're going with the people that we send to the war and we send to mission we're going with them we don't let them to be alone and I think this is part of the strange of the Israel community of the Israeli society we can argue we can don't agree but at the end when something bad happened to you you know that you have somebody that you can trust it okay and you can trust your 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 country no okay um let me uh so um for uh, okay so now uh before we end the show let's go to the Able Den on Air bulletin board. It contains numbers of the uh, or uh, numbers or um, websites. Uh, if you want to uh, contact um, uh, our guest um, on today's program or uh, donate money for the cause on today's uh, program. For more information on the conflict in Israel, and if you would like to donate. Uh, money to the Israel cause um, for uh, the army or supplies, you can contact um, www.nefeshbenefesh.org. That is www.nefeshbenefesh.org. Um, thank you, uh, David Wecker, for joining us on this edition of Able Den on Air, and um, please be safe during this uh, time in Israel. Um, and please, you know, with your family there right now, uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for joining us on this edition of Able Den on Air. I'm Lawrence Seiler. More information on um, Able Den on Air and what you've seen on today's program, you can go to www.orcamedia.com. Net. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Now let's go to the Able Den on Air bulletin board. It contains uh, it contains websites and information on today's program. If you would like to donate any supplies to the Israeli army uh, during this conflicting time, you can go to www.afmda. Dot org. That is www.amfda.org. Uh, that is uh, uh, Morgan. Da yeah, that is Morgan David Adam. Uh, dot org. That's M A G E N David A D O M, which is the equivalent of. Uh, the American Red Cross. So if you would like to donate any supplies to um, the uh, uh, to the um, if you would like to donate any funds or any supplies for uh, what is going on right now, you can go to the donate page of the uh, of uh, Magandavid Adam uh, 
dot org, and um, which is the equivalent of the American Red Cross. So for more information on that, you can go to www.afmda.org. And if you would like to find out more information on Israel and services, you can go to www.nefeshbenefesh.org. That is www.nefeshbenefesh.org. This has been the uh, Able Then On Air Bulletin Board. Only on Able Then On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. Uh, thank you to David Wecker, a social worker. Um, we must pray for Israel. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Major sponsors for Able Then On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Able Then On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Able Then On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Then On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.